our fifth tutorial then and we're going to look at tags and branching we've been through installing an SVN server setting up the client tortoise SVN we've got the basics of checkout and commit and we've looked at resolving conflicts in module 4 module 5 tags and branching tags allow us to give a more human friendly name to specific revisions of our folders and files. So instead of using revision 1034, we could use a tag instead, which might be version one. Branching gives us the capability to create a copy of the folders and files in our repository and a different instance of those files and folders so that we can work on them without fear of corrupting our main copy that we might be releasing to our customer and our clients and our end users. So what are we trying to achieve with branches and tags then? Well, we might have our repository on our server here, and that might be repo one. And we start out on that repository with a set of files, and SVN labels those as revision one. And then over a period of time, we might make some changes. We might add an additional file and SVN labels that as revision two and so on over a period of time. And we end up with revision three and revision four. Well, where tagging comes in is that we may decide that we want to take a set of those files and rather than go with the revision numbers that SVN gives our set of files, so R3 in this example here, we may decide we want to give that a more user-friendly identifier. So in a typical scenario, you might take that revision and that set of files and you might package them up. You might release them as version 1.0 of your files. And it would make sense if you're releasing that as a package to your customers or end users that you then label that or tag it in SVN as version 1.0.0. And that's what we'll see in a minute is how you can instruct SVN to take that revision 3 set of files and a more user friendly tag in this example version 1.0.0 when we get to branches and we start looking at branches then what we have is that we may have this release version 1.0.0 and we only ever want to make small updates to that revision so maybe we have a patch and we want to release we want to package and release version 1.0.1 and that might only include just a tiny update to one file in the package. Now at the same time we may want to be working on a completely new feature on our product and that may include some significant changes to our set of files and what we don't want to do is to start making those changes in either this R3 or R4 revision because that would then impact our ability to release those packages at a later stage. So what we would do is branch our revision three, which is 1.00, and we would create a new set of files or a new instance, if you like, of the same product within the same repository. And we might start working on this and making significant changes. So we might add lots of more files. We might make significant changes to some of those files. But what we wouldn't want to do is contaminate our official releases, our version 1.01 .01 and our version 1.00, with any of those significant updates. We'd want to work on those separately on this branch and make changes only on that branch. And when that branch is stable, then we might merge that back into the trunk. And no prizes for guessing that it's called the trunk because it's the main 
or core set of files that we're working on and releasing. Whereas up here we have our branch and maybe even branches off branches that have new features or experimental updates to our core set of files that we want to work on separately. So what we're going to look at first then is some examples of uh, creating some branches and then we'll look at the tags. But before we do any of that we need to set up a repository that gives us that tags and branching capability. So in Visual SVN Server we can create a new repository by clicking or right clicking on the repository node and selecting new repository. The important step here is that after we've selected the repository type, and we'll select the default and given it the new repository name, we need to select a single project repository option here. If we go for the empty repository, we don't get the creation of the trunk, branches and tags folders, which is exactly what we need for creating branches and tags. So continuing selecting the defaults, so all users have read and write access, clicking the create button and finishing the creation of that. And now when we look at this repository, what we'll see is, is that it starts out with three new folders, our trunk, which is the main location for our core files, talk about that in a minute, a tags folder, so all of our user friendly names like version one will be stored in here and then the branches with our separate instances of the files and folders in our repository will be created in here and this is significantly different from our other repository that we created where the files and folders were just stored at the top level in the repository once we've created the repository we want to check that out locally into a folder on our our local system First off, we need to get the repository URL, so we'll copy that to the clipboard. And then on our local system, we will create a folder where we can check this repository out. So new folder, and we'll just call that repo2, so it's our local instance of the repository. And using Tortoise SVN, right click Tortoise SVN, SVN checkout and in the checkout we want to paste in our URL of our repository for repo 2. Click on OK and once that or once the contents of that repository have been checked out and we drill into repository 2 we'll see that this particular checkout supports our branches, tags and trunks capability. So next then we need to create some files and folders as part of the example. So we'll create those in the trunk. I've just copied those and I'm going to paste those into this folder. Add those folders and files to our repository and commit them. So we have our first So we have our initial commit of the files into the repository. And this is effectively our trunk, our main set of files that we'll be working on. And off that trunk, we'll create our branches. So all of those files are stored in the trunk, in the repository, and we want to create a branch off that trunk. Now the way we create a branch is not unsurprisingly um, if we go up a level uh, right clicking on the top level folder that contains the files the trunk files selecting tortoise SVN and you'll find the option to create a branch or tag the dialog box for this gives us the the option to specify where we commit or create our branch so we don't want to do that in the trunk, where we want to do this when we browse the repository is in the branch. And what we need to do at this stage, 
now we've specified it will be a branch, is specify the name of that branch. So we can create branch ABC, for example. Uh, give the log message. And commit that change or that creation of the branch. Now, one important point here is to note that the message or notice here specifies that whilst we've created that branch, we are still working on the main trunk. We have not moved to the branch, we're working with our original set of files. So click OK on that. And what we'll see is if we look in the branch, there's currently no files in there because we haven't actually checked out anything from the branch. We've created that branch in the repository and we can see that if we refresh in Visual SVN and refresh the branch, you can see branch ABC there. But as SVN or the Tortoise SVN client warned us, we're actually still working on, on our trunk set of files. So what we need to do is check out that branch. And we can do that by right clicking on branches, S Tortoise SVN, update. And we can see now that our Tortoise SVN client has checked out branch ABC. So if we drill into the branches, we'll see branch ABC. And in here we can work on a completely separate instance of our files and folders, maybe add some completely new features, develop, test, and when we're ready, maybe even release the branch or merge those branch changes back into the trunk. So we have one repository, repo2, repo2 checked out locally, and we have two instances of the files in that repository, the trunk, instance and the branch instance, branch ABC. So the trunk instance locally, and we have the branch instance, branch ABC locally too. So that's branching and how we work with two completely separate instances of our files and folders that are from the same repository. What we'll look at now is how we create tags. So if we go back to our trunk, and we can create tags on either the trunk or the branches, but if we work on our trunk now, we can see that we have a, a set of files, and if we right click on there, Tortoise SVN, and we go to Show Log, we'll see that we're currently at revision two. But revision two, as we check, more changes in revision three, revision four, and we'll be up at revision 1034 at some point, and it becomes difficult to track what that revision is actually about. What we want to do is give it a tag that gives it a user-friendly name then. So at this stage, whilst we've got revision two, we could give that an initial tag, and we can right click on the trunk, Tortoise SVN, branches and tags, and it's the same dialog box as the branching, same concept. What we're actually doing is creating a copy. But in this instance, what we want to do is say that we're creating a tag. So in the to path, we change this to tags. And then at the end of the tags path, we want to give it a tag name. And we might call this version 1.0.0. Put a message on here, tagging first release. Click on OK. And again, SVN tells us that we're working on the trunk and not the, the tag at this stage. Click on OK. And if again we go to the SVN repository, select our tags, refresh the repository view, we'll see that we now have a tag for version 1.0.0. So if ever we want to check out or get the version 1.0.0, we can, on our local system, check out to the tags directory. I 
our set of files that we tagged with that identifier version 1.00. And whenever we go to get that tag or the set of files associated with that tag, it will always be that set of files. Doesn't matter whether we check in changes or modifications on the trunk or any branches. Revision 2 now relates to version 1.00 and whenever we update or check out that tag we get that set of files that we've just identified as version 1.00. And what typically happens in a development lifecycle then is that you know as part of changes on our repository 2 set of files within the trunk we may make updates so I might update file 2 for example I might make I'll commit those changes to the repository we'll have another version or a revision in the repository and in this instance we're looking at revision 3 or revision 5 and I may want to tag revision 5 with another unique identifier that identifies this as a formal release and that might be a, a patch release for example where we create the tag 1.01 .01. And again, when we go to our repository and refresh the tags folder in repo2, we'll see that we now have a set of files that has been tagged or labeled as version 1.01, which is the equivalent of revision 5. A useful thing to help you conceptualize this is that essentially branching and tagging are the same thing in SVI, SVN's eyes. We're just creating a copy of the files at a certain point in time for a certain revision of the files and the difference between branching and tagging is only that they are completed or copied to the branches folder or the tags folder in the SVN repository on the server. So this is a very quick overview of branching and tagging. There's a lot more to this including merging but this will give you just the basics to get you started, something to build on from here.